the next step, something I think you should strongly look at, is controlling the temperature during your fermentation. This is going to improve the product as well as the consistency each and every batch. So what I'm going to do today is show a couple different approaches you might want to consider and give you an idea of what it would take to actually implement this from a cost point of view as well as the devices needed to make it work. By the way, there's also a lot of other more passive forms of uh, temperature control. So you'll see some guys making their chambers out of uh, that builder's insulating foam and doing all kinds of different things to achieve the same goal. My hat's off to them. That, that's a great approach, a very cost effective. I actually tried it a little bit, had some trouble, so I decided I might as well just take the extra step, buy the appliance, and really get the thing set up right. So I'll show you a couple different approaches, food for thought, but if you're thinking about improving your process, this is something you might really want to consider. As a starting point, what you could certainly do is add a temperature probe to your fermenter and just see what the amount of variability is in the thermal profile. And I think you'll start to see why controlling that is a very important step. Likely you'll see too that this thermal drift up and down through your process is a lot greater than you had any idea of. So again, just take your normal digital thermometer, apply this to the outside of your carboy or your uh, fermentation bucket, whatever you're using, put some insulation over it and just monitor what the temperature does. You'll be quite surprised. So let's go ahead and let's take a look and see what we have as far as the chamber options. The first example we'll look at is the digital controller connected to the fermenter inside that refrigerator. The controller is nice because it allows us to set the temperature that we're looking to hold the beer at during the fermentation process. I have this extra thermometer up top as well where I can measure my ambient temperature as well as the temperature inside the refrigerator and then the STC 1000 is measuring the temperature of the beer itself. So let's open up and take a look. So here's the inside and you can notice I have the conical fermenter so I really did have to have an upright configuration because it would be too difficult to lift that in and out of the chest freezer. You can see I have the blow off tube into the sanitizer in the back there. I have the temperature sensor underneath this foam right here, held tightly in place by that strap. And that comes up to the control unit itself. So this is a wonderful setup, largely driven by the fact that I have the conical fermenter, but you can see a carboid fit as well. A couple things to watch out for though. You need to watch your space down here between where the um, floor of the refrigerator is and the hump in the back there where the condenser is because you don't have a lot of room back and forth and you'd hate to buy something not big enough. The refrigerator option definitely is more expensive just because it's a little more unique. So let's come over and look at what we've got here on this chest freezer. My freezer is really set up for serving but it could certainly be used in a dual purpose role for fermentation control. I also use it as my conditioning for secondary fermentation. But you can see the contrast here. I have an old analog control unit. I've added a little uh, temperature probe to it so I can know exactly what the inside temperature is and control it accordingly. If you're going to use something like this for fermentation only, you probably do not even need to add the wood collar. I added that because I wanted to have my faucets here easily attached. So let's take a look inside. So what I've done here is added first off this builder's foam to give me more insulation. And you can see internally, right now I have a couple kegs, I have my hop storage, cup of bottle of beer, but you could easily see how you could fit a couple carboys down in the bottom section here. 
The nice thing about the chest freezer is it's a lot less expensive than the refrigerator. You can buy something like this at Home Depot, $150, $170. You can also find them used from a lot of folks on Craigslist. So it's a pretty easy implementation. You have your actual chamber, your controller, temperature probe, and you're pretty much there as far as having absolute control over your fermentation. Of course, you could do the chest freezer approach with the STC1000 digital controller. And that would probably be a pretty ideal situation for most. So anyway, I would recommend that anybody interested in taking that next step in their brewing process to definitely consider implementing something as I've shown you here. Good luck and good brewing.